Hey everybody, my name is Kristana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. So today I'm gonna do something. I've been doing a little bit of decoupage in the last video I did decoupage and it's kind of been a thing that I've been trying to kind of hone in on. And this dresser behind me is something that I did a while ago. It was a labor of love. Yes, I hand painted all of this plaid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to decoupage over top of this because I really want to try to hone in on decoupaging and getting it really nice and smooth. And for those of you guys who have never done it before, this is really a great piece to start with because it's so flat. So we're gonna walk through the decoupage process. I'm gonna show you guys how to blend it out. We're gonna do some texture and the paper that we're using is super cute. It's super fun. So if you guys want to see that, stay here. The first thing I did was repaint the whole piece in a color called New Jerusalem by I Love Hue Paint. And then we're going to use Sourpuss. And this is a Whimsical paper. So I want to show you something really important. So you see where the cat's eyes are. You want to make sure that anything you decoupage, if they've got an eyes, a nose, a mouth, are generally on a flatter piece because if you put it up there where there's a transition, it's going to make it look weird because the eyeballs are going to be all distorted. So that's something really important to think about when you're decoupaging is making sure that the placement of any kind of face on a creature or if it's a person is on a flat surface and not being messed up or distorted by any kind of indents. The next thing you want is you want a shape chip brush. I have a plate, I have a saran wrap, and then I have a top coat. This is Jolie's top coat. I like it because it is not super thick, but it also works really well and it has a nice sheen and it's also super durable. So I'm gonna put that down first and then I'm gonna take my paper and carefully place it to where I want, and I'm gonna start working that paper from the center out. So you're gonna see I'm placing it down carefully. I also have nitrile gloves on, so that way if I need to use my hands to smooth anything out, I have gloves on so it's not getting stuck on the oils of my skin. So I'm gonna take this saran wrap or plastic wrap that I've just balled up in a ball, and I'm going to gently go over the areas to push down the paper almost as if it is glue underneath there. And you're going to carefully go across the paper and smooth it out starting from the center and working your way out to get any wrinkles or air bubbles out. You can do this next part prior to this, but if you don't want to, you can place the paper down so you can see. What I'm doing is taking an artist brush, and this is just water, and I'm going around the edges so that I can rip the paper. It's a lot easier to blend in paper with a jagged edge than it is with these straight lines. And so, again, I have done this where I've taken the paper and done this prior to even putting it on the piece with any kind of decoupage medium but I am doing it while it's on the piece as right now because now I can visualize exactly where I want to do my blend. So either or, it doesn't matter, but carefully pull it apart and that way you'll have your little jagged edges and I guarantee you it'll be much easier for you to blend a jagged edge than it is for you to blend those straight lines. Once you've taken the edges off, it's time to decoupage the rest of it. So I just carefully do it by just small areas, okay? So I put my decoupage medium down and then I push from the center out. And I'm just going to do this carefully and slowly. This really allows you to get all the air bubbles and wrinkles out. And so again, just small sections at a time, carefully, and then again, just pushing down and then pushing out and you want to have a light hand but the saran wrap is really helpful because it smooths over the paper versus using your hand or anything else it really helps it get smooth <laughs>
after I have adhered the paper to the piece, I'm going to go on top of the piece with my decoupage medium and still smooth it even more because you may have some wrinkles. So I'm going to put quite a bit of decoupage medium on there so that the saran wrap that I'm using will glide easy. And again, we're just going to go from left to right. You can do small little circles to kind of smooth out any wrinkles. You're gonna to try to push air bubbles out. So you wanna go from the center out and if you're not, if the air bubble is on the edge, just make sure you're pushing out towards the area where the edge is so that way you can get that air out of there. But this is what I'm gonna do next is put this on the entire piece and just kind of do little circles and rub this carefully so that way we can do this step to smooth it out even more. You can either wait for the paper to dry or you can do it while it's slightly wet. I'm taking an X-Acto knife and I'm using a sawing motion just very carefully. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna rub it down. Now, if it was dry, you would definitely wanna put more decoupage medium on it and then do this process where you push it down. So that way it kind of folds over onto the, the areas that you cut. I was first inspired to do this lettering, which these are just vinyl letters. I was inspired by my friend Heika from Heika's Furniture Art. And then I saw my friend Jesse from Painted Paradise by Jesse, and I just really thought it was cool and fun. This little cat is sassy and I love coffee. And so I just wanted to use a play on words and just make this a fun piece. And so I am just putting these vinyl letters down and then I'm going to paint right over them. You don't wanna to put too much texture on them to hide them. So when you are putting your texture on, just smooth over the letters so that way you can still see them for later on when you're going to pull off these letters. Whatever you put these letters over top is what is gonna be exposed underneath. So the new Jerusalem color is what we're gonna see later on. The next step is to mix Annie Sloan's chalk paint, Han Fleur is the color, which is a brown, with salt wash, which is a texture additive. And I'm just gonna mix these together I don't want it super thick, but I want it enough to create a texture underneath the other colors. And so what I'm doing is just mixing these up and then I'm going to take a cheap chip brush and I'm going to add the texture on the entire piece and around the paper. So we're gonna go a little bit over the edge of the paper with this next part. Turn that eat your greens When you fight, you fight, but you do be clean Then you come to the bed and you love feel dirty It's everybody sweat the drops, you'll be keen Bring it, let me get your juiciest piece Can't remember when I've had the same piece The shops of the club never had no boundaries How's it gonna be? You wanna eat these centipedes Where we gonna go? You gonna need these calories Giving me a treat to refill these batteries Then you only them on your knees, there's no way to dream Ooh, you sneak it up on you There's nothing you can do the next step is I'm gonna lay this piece on its back and I'm going to spritz it with water. And then I'm going to add some sprinkles of the salt wash. What this is gonna do is it's going to act as a resist later on. And so that way when I go in and paint it, I'm later on it dries and I'm gonna scrape it back a little bit. And then it's going to create little pockets that are gonna show those brown colors underneath. Once everything was dry, I went back over the areas with New Jerusalem. So this way, the brown can kind of show through as almost a rusty look, and you'll see that later on. And then also when I when the texture additive that acts as a resist is pulled up a little bit, it's going to show little pockets of the brown. So I'm going to go over the entire thing with New Jerusalem, and then I'm going to start doing my blending. 
So on the screen, I tell you what each color is. And really the best way to do this is to take your paper before you do this and kind of pick out colors around the edges that you think would work. If it doesn't, so you can see that this Enchanted Emerald is a little bit more green than the area over to the left. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Whimsical Lime to lighten it up a little bit. It's still a green and I'm going to blend it in, do circles, I'm gonna do dots. So I'm gonna do a lot of stippling type blending. It's kind of a mottled blend. This is what it really is gonna look like is a mottled blend. And you're just going to kind of trust your gut and your instinct. So if you can see right here in those areas how I'm going over it with Whimsical and that brown is showing through because we're kind of pulling up that texture additive, that is exactly what I wanted. So I'm adding a little bit of blue. At this point, you're gonna to have to just trust your instincts when it comes to colors and the colors that you see and trying to blend those colors out. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, but really all you have to do is just kind of layer upon layer upon layer. So if a color doesn't work, then try another color and see if it's a little bit closer. Trust your instincts and trust your eyes when it comes to colors but this is what I'm gonna do. And then what I do is I take a microfiber cloth every so often and I dab the area or I'll take my fingers and I'll kind of rub the area to smear it almost to create even more of a seamless transition or blend. So I'm just gonna let you watch the rest of it and what I do because it's going to be different for each piece of paper that you use. Unless you use this paper, you're gonna be using different colors, but the technique is the same.
part right here where I use a microfiber cloth and then I also use my hands to kind of blend it in a little bit. And then once I am done, I am gonna take my X-Acto knife and carefully pull back all the areas where my little vinyl letters were. And you'll see that the New Jerusalem is the color that sticks through. And now we have our cute little coffee right meow and then the other part that I put. And then what I do after this is I seal this entire piece and then it's done. So I hope you guys like that. Let me know what you think. Okay, everybody, this piece is done. This video is done. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that video was helpful for you guys and kind of helping you guys get your decoupage a little bit more smooth. I know that with each one that I do, I am able to get it smoother and smoother. In the very beginning, it would wrinkle and I just, it was frustrating. And so um, these are some of the tips that I have used and done to really get a nice smooth finish on my paper and then also the blending out of the stuff. Also, I realized that my eye looks scary, okay? I play softball and I had a tournament this weekend and while I wasn't looking, someone threw a ball at my face. So I'm okay, my eye is okay, it just is pretty shy shades of purple and whatever. So don't worry about me, just in case you noticed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, happy creating, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around. See it now. Pack our bags and get in.